what up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of Disney Plus new series Turner and Hooch, which arrives July 21, I'm here talking with the composer of this new show, Jeff Cardoni. How are you, Jeff? Hey, doing good. Nice to yeah. be here. How are you? Not bad. Thank you for taking the time. Congratulations. And But before we get to discussing this show, you've been in this business for a very long time. You've done studio movies like uh, Just Friends and Step Up All In. You've scored for all kinds of TV shows, including The Kaminsky Method uh, and Young Sheldon. So obviously you've enjoyed a consistent steady employment as a composer because I've talked to composers who are still in the stage of either owning their craft or networking or making connection in order to land a gig. So let me start by asking you, after all these years, do you still see the score composing industry the same as it was when you first started or has it significantly changed in any way? If so, how? Uh, well, good question. Um, yeah, it's changed a lot, I think, um, as everything has, you know? I mean, nothing kind of stays the same in this crazy town. Um, but the most dramatic increase for me, obviously, is streaming and just the, the line between film and television really being blurred, you know? You know, when I, when I got into it, you were a TV composer, you were a film composer, and then that kind of crossed over, and then streaming and came in and just threw everything into insanity. So now it's, it's just the wild west out there. Uh, so on one hand, it's cool. You know, there's a lot more opportunities, a lot more things to work on, but it's also, there's no rhyme or reason sometimes to how, what is what and you know and there was a, a certain cachet to getting a movie in the theater you know and you had a wide release theatrical movie that was pretty cool but now you know there's these gigantic blockbuster movies that go straight to streaming and you know it's just it's just a new thing and i think we're all just trying to hang on for dear life and uh, figure it out and just uh you know you can't you just have to adapt with the times but uh, it's an exciting time for sure one fun fact that I think my viewers would get a kick out of knowing about you is that you were once briefly a lead guitarist for Alien Crime Syndicate, but you left the, the rock world to compose full time. Uh, a lot of people would love to be in a band. Uh, did you hit an epiphany saying, this just isn't for me, my calling or my purpose is somewhere else? How, how did that go exactly? Oh, man, that's... that's yeah, I mean, I think I, as many people, wanted to be a rock star when we grew up, you know, so I spent the better part of my 20s driving around in the van trying to, uh, you know, trying to make it in, in, in the band, and I played guitar forever, uh, and then I guess at a certain point, yeah, when I moved to LA, I got, I became like a higher gun guitar player, and that's how I ended up in ACS, you know, and after doing that for a while, it was, it was great, um, but I realized that it wasn't as creative as I wanted to be. You know, I was kind of just mm -hmm. a trained monkey playing parts that weren't my parts and I wasn't writing songs. So it was just, I, at that point, kind of discovered composition and I, I, I just realized that that's more where I want to be. You know, I was always kind of the mad scientist in my other bands and I like writing and creating and being in the studio. And, um, that's how I kind of discovered composing and just figured that I can take what I did in the band, my favorite parts of being in the band and apply it to a whole new medium. And uh, I just kind of decided that's where I wanted to pursue. And it's been, as you say, a long ride. Yeah, 20, 20 years now. I, yeah, I feel like I'm a hundred years old, but uh, <laughs> yeah, still here. Yeah. So um, Turner and Hooch obviously is based on the 1989 film. And it's a straight up sequel. I'm surprised by that. I thought it was going to be a reboot or reimagining, but turns out Josh Peck's character is the son of Tom Hanks's character from the film. Uh, so in your process of creating the music for this show, did you at any time look back on the music for the film by composer Charles Gross to perhaps draw some inspiration from there or emulate or apply a little of his, of his themes onto this show? Or did you always intend from the beginning that this was going to be separate from the film? Uh, no, I, of course, went back and, and looked and we had a conversation about that because I, you know, you have to respect what came before you, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out as we got into it more that the producer, it, it was just a different animal and it just, it didn't really apply to this show. Just as, you know, it was, it was a pretty synthy score for the original and, and, and honestly, it was very minimally scored. You know, there wasn't a lot of music, which was, you know, that was the first thing I noticed about it when I watched it. I 
because I didn't remember my initial impression of the music and when I went back and watched it. Um, so it was very minimally scored. Um, whereas this, you know, being the times that we're in and being, you know, Mick G directing the pilot and, and Matt Nix, they just had a different aesthetic. So I couldn't really necessarily apply the film to this. So we tried and then eventually it just became, let's just go to our own place with it. And it's because there's there's quite a bit of music and they, you know, even though I sometimes feel there may be a little too music, too much music in spots, but they, you know, that's what they are going for. So we just kind of kind of came up with our own vibe and, and took it from there. Speaking of different animal, um, uh, Matt Nix, who created and developed this uh, new uh, sequel series, uh, he previously gave us Burn Notice, which is a spy show. So that's a different animal. Uh, Turner and Hooch obviously is a Disney thing. So it's lighthearted comedy. Even the action packed uh, scenes are designed to be fun and mild. Um, so in your conversation with Matt, uh, what were some of the things that he wanted you to do or not to do with your score for Turner and Hooch? Right, that was the hard part because you wanted to play all the action and thriller aspects, play it straight, you know, don't make it a cartoon. But, you know, in the middle of a five minute chase, you also cut the dog. So it it was a balance trying to find the uh, the balance between straight action and playing it straight and, and the more family aspect of it, you know? And I think we've definitely leaned more towards the playing it straight than the comedic aspect, but the, you know, there, there are definitely some. It was just a balancing act. I mean, it was a hard, hard one to find because I, you know, sometimes I would suggest maybe we don't play that with music, just play the more dramatic things with score and lay off some of the lighter bits. Um, but eventually I just started getting into it. They just started doing more and more music and it ended up being Disney, you know, they, they are trying. That's the hard thing too, is who is the audience of this? You know, is it people, that like the original movie, looking for some nostalgia, is it older people like that, or is it young kids? And so I think we had to try to appeal to everyone and while also not turning off the other, you know, not turning off an adult who might watch it and find it too childish, but not make it too intense for the kids that it's too scary. So it's a tough balance to find, honestly. Well, let me tell you, uh, us adults would get a I mean, we would love the uh, the the second episode, the parody to Die Hard. I mean, I just had so much fun watching. That. Oh, I'm glad you saw that. Yeah, that was that was amazing. That was a lot of fun. And that's another one. You know, my first question to Matt was, "Are we gonna, you know, are we gonna not parody? Are we gonna, you know, pay tribute to Die Hard scores, which are, you know, fantastic?" Mm. Um, and again, they were like, ah, "I don't know. We want to kind of keep it in our world." So I, you know, I tried to hint in a little bit. Of, of the sound of them in some of the hallway chases and stuff with a little bit of wiggling stuff, but mm -hmm. it, I don't know. But but I, I thought it was really clever the way that they got into the Die Hard. You know, like if you didn't see it coming, you'd be really surprised. You're like, oh wow, this Die Hard is very much like Die Hard. You know, <laughs> I thought that was really written really well. I mean, it, it, it was pretty cool. Right? Yeah. I totally agree. Now, talk to me about the instruments that you incorporated for this show i read that your background was classical piano but you know i've watched the first three episodes and it sounds like you've also blend piano with some rock band instruments and a bit of orchestra talk to me about the sounds of the music for turner and hooch what are the instruments that instruments that you wanted to bring in or to include for this one well, the, I think the big thing was to try to come up with a melody in the beginning, you know, and that honestly the the, the little tune that became the theme song, mm. uh, which it, now is just a rock song. Originally, it started off as this orchestral, more Mission Impossible kind of thing. But but the tune that that was the first thing we came up with, and um, that kind of stuck. So that kind of became kind of the DNA for a lot of the series for the the tune for Hooch and a, a little melody that recurs a lot. So that was the main thing. And then figuring out instrumentation, it was just, we got a lot of ground to cover here, you know? I mean, especially on the pilot, you know, we didn't have very much temp music or anything we were referenced. So it was more, I would just write something. We would get feedback, what they like, what they don't like. And we just kind of kept fine tuning it. Um, but Mick G, especially directing the pilot, he definitely has an aesthetic. You know, he's got a hot, you know, from Charlie's Angels and a lot of things he's done. He sometimes, He's not subtle about his, you know, action. So there was always the 
the comment that we have to keep the energy up and keep the drive up. So that it was orchestral, but then that eventually became like that's some guitars and that that's a fan of electric guitar. So we ended up using a lot of electric guitar for it. And then, you know, for some of the lighter moments, we used, you know, acoustic guitar, piano. Um, I've got this little zither I used for some of the hoop stuff, for some of the little walking around things. You know, I, I feel like in a lot of times in a lighter comedic thing, you, you got to come up with that kind of sound for walking around. I call it walking around music, but that sound of what's the getting from A to B music when it's not a chase scene, you know, what, what's the vibe of that? And so we had upright bass and percussion and zither and piano for a lot of that. And uh, that was pretty much it. And then, you know, there was always, there was always the underlying story about his dad and what happened to his dad. And that goes through the whole season. So then there's like a mysterious element to that. That comes up in the end of the pilot and that's kind of woven through all the episodes as well. So that went into more mystery kind of line. So it it never got bored. We definitely covered a lot of territory with this score, which is, you know, it, sometimes it's, it's hard <laughs> to try to, when there's that much music, you, to just not make it seem like wallpaper. You know, you really, I really tried to, and a lot of times that means pulling it back in a lot of spots. So it's just, you know, when you're going to 10 all the time, it's really hard to keep someone's attention. So. I'm always trying to go from, you know, the dynamic. So if you've got a big, loud action scene, to go down to something really small and minimal uh, on the other parts to make them feel the difference as well. Character themes are a big part of any score. Uh, did you create a theme for Hooch and a theme for Scott, or did you treat it uh, treat them as a tandem or a team up for character theme? Uh, it's mainly become hooch. There, there are a few things. Like I said, there's a there's the melody for from the main titles, which really has become hooch's theme. But mm. you know, also when I st first started thinking about it, I was thinking of the peanuts a little bit. I was thinking of uh, the theme from that, and I was <laughs> like, I like the feel of. I, I was like, all right, we got a dog, and so something that just is a little toe tapping thing that you can lay this melody over. So that that kind of started it all. And then, like I said, we had the melody for um, for Scott's dad, and that kind of is woven into a bunch. And then there's a the melody for, so not necessarily a tune for Scott, but there's a, a tune for Scott and Erica and their kind of mm. romantic uh, flirtation that goes around for most of the season uh, without spoiling anything. But so there's, there's always that going on as well. So, those are the three main ones. And then I kind of try to weave them in together depending on what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I'm a sucker for melody and for old school, you know, having a tune that's, that ties it all together, you know? And, and sometimes that's not in vogue these days in a lot of things, but this, especially because this is a primarily organic score, it's not a very synthetic score. It's mostly organic instruments. Um, I felt like you can get away with having a, a, a melody going through there. And, uh, you know, with a dog, I think you can get away with it even a little bit more. So, which is nice, you know? I mean, I like going for the heart on some of those moments, and that's my favorite stuff to do. So, uh, it's nice to have license to do that a little bit since we're so broad and, and try, who we're trying to deal with. You know, so I, I feel like on some shows, if it's very modern, minimal, and dark, you have to be really restrained in that stuff, which, which is great. But I feel like on this, you had a little bit more license be less restrained which is kind of fun fun question jeff uh are you yourself a dog person and would you ever want to own uh, the constantly drooling dog de bordeaux i am a dog person uh we've had we had two which sadly they were both old i had izzy uh who was a, a wheaton terrier and i had really a cheap dog uh, Izzy passed away a year ago. Oh, uh, she, she was fourteen, and then Lily passed away while I was doing the twelfth episode of this, which was a super sad episode because Scott had to give back Hooch, so I had some extra uh, gas in the tank when I was scoring all those emotional oh. scenes because I literally had a picture of my dog here where I just had to put it down. So yeah, I love dogs. So. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, dogs are very universal, I think. You know, it's something it appeals to everyone. So yeah, it was kind of nice. It was kind of therapeutic to get to finish up the season with a nice resolution after the, what I went through with my own dog. Uh, so we hope to get another one soon. But would you ever get a Bordeaux? 
no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Some dogs can be a bit too much. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After all the hours I spent looking at hoops, uh, I don't think he's going to win. But <laughs> cute. Someone else is cute. Exactly. And finally, um, what's next on your horizon, Jeff? I noticed stars is new wrestling drama heels is part of your upcoming projects what can yeah. you tell us about what you're developing next uh heels is uh one of the things i'm most proud of ever having done honestly it's it's a straight up drama um set in the world of wrestling um you gotta watch it it's so good i can't even tell you i hope people find it um it's a very emotional guitar score you know it's not it's not comedic at all and um I got to write the theme song for it um, with uh, a guy named Ben Fredwell from uh, Band of Horses. So he's singing on my theme song and it's it's really amazing. So I can't wait for people to see this. It's, it's a great show. I, I honestly, of all the shows I've done, like I've seen a lot of pilots in my day from Silicon Valley to whatever, but this I think is the best pilot I've ever seen or had a chance to work on. It's really good. So I got that. I got I've got some new shows going out in the fall. I got a show called Ghost coming to CBS, which is a BBC import. Uh, I got this little indie movie coming out next month called Ride the Eagle. It's got uh, Jake Johnson from New Girl. It's got Susan Sarandon. It's got J.K. Simmons. Uh, they shot it over COVID, and it was a really fun thing to work on. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of soundtrack out for that. Um, there's a Ryan Reynolds movie called Free Guy coming out in a few weeks. Uh, I didn't support that, The Amazing Perspective, but um, I did a version of Mariah Carey's Fantasy for it. We did this <laughs> gigantic orchestral arrangement of it, and Jodie Comer, the, sing the actress, sings it, and it's pretty awesome. So uh, that'll be released soon, too, as well. So. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And for my fans at home, everybody go check out Disney Plus new series Turner and Hooch arriving July 21. Jeff, thank you for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you very much.